Hello everyone, my name is Bethany and this is my channel Bethany's Thoughts. Welcome back. Today I am doing my December wrap-up, obviously, from the title. I'm hoping to squeeze a couple more into this wrap-up, so I might come at back at the end and add a couple more, but so far I've read 21 books. Ah, let me explain though. Several of these are audio, several of these are novellas, Without further ado, let's get into it. So I did two readathons this month, which is why I have read so many things. One of them was the Romance Takeover readathon that was hosted by Jen and a host of other people. I had a TBR for that. I'll link that down below, as well as Smutathon. And I have a Smutathon vlog. If you want to see what I read on Smutathon vlog, I'll link that one up above and you can see the Smutathon vlog. And I had a TBR for that one as well. So those were, so if you want to see some more immediate thoughts of some of the things that I had, you can. Those two readathons basically kind of took up my whole TBR for this month. So I didn't even do a TBR this month. So I just read all willy nilly of what I wanted to. It was kind of fun. It was just, it was just, a lot of it was smutty novellas. So it was a smutty good time. And that's been a lot of fun. The beginning of the month, though, didn't start off so great, so let's go with that first. To start off with, I read for, this is for the Romance Takeover readathon I was in the middle of, I read Dirty Like Jude by Janie Diamond. It's either Janie Diamond or Jane Diamond. I'm not, not, not for sure how to pronounce it. And that one I rated a two and a half. I really like the Dirty series. It's about a rock band. Jude is actually the member of the rock band Security, but he has, like, a really long-standing friendship with the band. And Ronnie, who is the heroine, is uh, friends with one of, best friends with one of the other band members' sister. It's, I'm not going to get into it a whole heck of a lot, but it's my least fave from the series that I've read so far. Uh, there was just kind of slut shaming that I didn't like about it. Ronnie kind of slept around. She was considered wild and... Jude kind of held that against her and was really jealous and really possessive, except not telling her that, like, he liked her, and that was just really gross, and yeah, it was not a big fan of the series. I like the series. The series is pretty, I mean, it's pretty dirty. The series is pretty smutty, and it's a good time, but not a fan of that installment. I have one more book of that series, and I want to read that one, and I'm actually looking forward to that one, but this one I just kind of had to read, had to read to, like, get through it. The next one I read was an audiobook. That was The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. That is the second Bridgerton book. Thank goodness to Libby for getting me all the Bridgerton books that I needed to read before the TV series came out. This was about Kate and Anthony. That was, it was, Kate and Anthony was kind of like a wallflower, wallflower and rake trope. I rated it four stars. Kind of enemies to lovers. Great banter between the two of them. Excellent banter. Definitely one of my more favorite books of the Bridgerton series so far. Really, really enjoyed it. It makes me hyped for a second season if the Bridgerton, if Bridgerton series gets renewed. So hyped because the second season with Kate was so good. Part of the same audiobook, but it counts as a separate book. So all the Bridgerton series has a second epilogue. In the audiobook, you listen to the second epilogue, which is almost, it's long enough to be its almost own novella. The Viscount Who Loved Me, second epilogue by Julia Quinn. I also rated four stars. All the banter and just the mallet of death. I need the mallet of death to happen in the TV series. It is great. That was a really fun scene in the book. And then they extended it for the epilogue. And it was a lot of fun. Next, I read my physical copy of In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I'm not going to get the book. I'm too lazy. <laughs> this is... Uh, about Andrew and May, and that is Friends to Lovers. It's basically like a holiday Hallmark movie meets Groundhog Day. I rate it three stars. I don't want to also talk about this a lot, too, but I could talk about it a lot because I have a lot of feelings about this book. So a lot of people have really felt that Christina Lauren's quality has gone downhill. I don't necessarily know that or don't know that. I will say I was definitely underwhelmed by this book. I love a Groundhog Day trope. I love a Groundhog Day trope so much. I love, like, the time loop, and I, I love that concept. I think it's a lot of fun, and you can do a lot of fun with it. This just didn't push it far enough on the Groundhog Day. And then the romance was sweet, but then 
it also didn't push it far enough. There's a scene where the conflict is introduced, and it's a really weak conflict, and I wasn't a fan. It was still cute, but it was a little underwhelming. I was underwhelmed, which is why I gave it three stars. The next one I listened to was an audiobook by An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. That is book number three. That is about the Benedict Bridgerton. And this was between Benedict and Sophie. This is a Cinderella retelling. And I love myself Cinderella retelling. I rated it three and a half stars. It's kind of insta-love, but it's still really cute. There is a really weird time jump in the middle of the novel. I'm not always a fan of a time jump when it's not necessary. I didn't really think it was. And the hero was a little pushy for reasons. I won't really explain why. I just didn't really like that whole aspect of it. I got it. I understood why he was like that for his time. Like it fit the time period that he was in. But also it was kind of like, ew, a little bit. How pushy he was. So that wasn't my favorite. I still like the connection between the two of them. And I still really liked Sophie. I think overall though, for the third book, Violet wins. Violet wins this book. Violet Bridgerton I love her, and she won the book to me. For that second epilogue from An Offer from a Gentleman, I also read in the same audiobook. I rated it four star. It was a uh, happily ever after for Posey, who's one of the characters that was in An Offer from a Gentleman. And it's my favorite second epilogue so far in all of them. Really enjoyed that one. Next, I read an ebook that was A Mistletoe Kiss by Jennifer Fay. This was about Susanna and Jake, and they are neighbors and a fake dating trope. I rated it two and a half stars. I just, I really wasn't a fan of the writing style. I had a lot of issues with the writing style. I thought the plot, the plot was kind of basic. The reasoning like behind the fake dating and the reasoning for like the secret being revealed were both very, very weak to me. It just wasn't a lot to me. The characters were very two dimensional, but there was some really cute holiday moments that were fun. So I still rated it two and a half. But yeah, overall, it was kind of meh. I kept falling asleep every time I read it. So if that doesn't tell you anything, I don't know what else will. The next book I read was Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. That is about book number four. That is an audiobook. This was my favorite of the Bridgerton series. And I was super hyped for this one because a lot of people say it's their favorite as well. This was about Colin and Penelope, friends to lovers. And I just wrote, love them, heart, heart. They're just so cute. I love their buildup. I love their just really sweet romance, very low angst. It was just super cute, and I just really liked them coming together. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed them. I wasn't a fan of the scene at the end, and I won't go into it too much because it's a bit spoilery, but... Yeah, the reveal at the end, how it was revealed, I wasn't really a big fan of. I think it could have gone a different direction. And that kind of made me not really like that part. But the rest of the romance, though, the rest of the romance was really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. And also listened to the fav the second epilogue of that one, The Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, on audio. And my least favorite second epilogue, I rated it at three stars. I expected more of a second epilogue from Colin and Penelope. I wanted them to be like traveling or seeing Colin and Penelope do things, but mostly was focused on Penelope and Eloise, which I love their friendship. But then second epilogue was, I don't know, it was underwhelming. I didn't really like that second epilogue. The next I read was an audiobook to Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn. That is book number five of the Bridgerton series. That was about Eloise and Philip. They are pen pals, and he proposes marriage, so she decides to just, like, show up on his door, and he just wants a wife to take care of his twins. Yeah, he's a widower. I really wanted to love this one, but the pacing just felt really all over the place. I felt like the romance built up very, very quickly at the end, but, like, didn't build up all the way from the beginning. Like, I would have liked to see her letters to them, how their relationship really developed, and that wasn't really there. Yeah, it was a little bit underwhelming. I, I rated it three and a half stars. Three and a half, yeah, three and a half stars. So I really still enjoyed it. Uh, also, trigger warning for suicide in the prologue. It would have been really nice to know. I went into it going, whoa. <laughs> so just FYI for you. The next book I read was A Physical Arc. That was uh, Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. 
Thanks to my bestie who won the Instagram giveaway and sent me and mailed me the ARC. I really, really appreciate it. This was about Vanessa and Adrian. I would say classify them kind of as a grump and sunshine trope. I feel like they fit that. Vanessa is a YouTuber. Adrian's a lawyer. And Vanessa has taken custody of her baby niece because her sister is struggling with drugs right now. And Vanessa takes it on herself to care for the baby while her sister's trying to get her act together. Vanessa is based on a YouTuber who has cystic fibrosis and Vanessa is struggling with the potential genetic predisposition to ALS. ALS is the really debilitating neuro disease. Vanessa's really has come to terms and with her future diagnosis, this is going to be her future. Her All of women in her family have died or have suffered from this. And Vanessa kind of has accepted this as her fate. She meets Adrian. Adrian kind of helps to take care of the baby. <laughs> it's quite the meet cute. I will say their meet cute is really, really funny. And I really appreciated it. The buildup between the two of them is sweet. I loved Adrian, despite his, despite the conflict, having an issue with his reaction to it. I really, really loved their connection. And I thought that he would just adore her was just so sweet. Really, really great. I do think that there was a couple points in the, in the book that weren't my favorites. Just a couple plot points that I wasn't a big fan of. So I rated it four stars. It wasn't a five star for me which was a little bit of a bummer because I was really, really excited about this one. I really wanted the same, like, emotional response that I had from the friend zone, and this just wasn't it for me. Still really, really enjoyed and still strongly recommend. And it comes out, I believe, in March or April? I'll put the date somewhere. Then, then I started my smut -a And I started my smut -a and then I didn't stop smut -a <laughs> So here we go. Here's, here's smut -a so that was where I read all the smutty novellas. To start off with, I did an ebook. It was, oh, all of these are ebooks, by the way. It was Tangled Vows by Anna Stone. This is available on Kindle Unlimited. It was about Ruby and Yvonne, so a sapphic BDSM interracial romance. Um, Yvonne is half Chinese. And it's three and a half stars. I thought the steaminess was really, really good. And the plot was just okay. The writing seemed really repetitive. Like they had the same questions and internal monologue was really, really similar and the same throughout the whole novella. I just think I would have liked a little bit of a variation or for them to address things sooner. I'm not really sure what I needed from it, but I think that was just a writing, writing stylistic issue for me. Otherwise, but the steam though, steam was really, really good. That was kind of mm, writing style didn't really jive with me, but still really enjoyed it overall and if you're looking for sapphic romance definitely can recommend the next one i read was an ebook that was the headmaster by tiffany by tiffany rice this i rated four stars it was about gwen and edwin uh which was the teacher and a headmaster so a little bit like forbidden between the two of them very much has a creepy gothic vibe but it's also a very sweet romance i was surprised i thought it was going to be a little bit darker and I was worried about that because I don't usually do dark romances, but to me it was actually kind of sweet. And Gwen and Edwin just have a really, I mean, they have a very insta-love connection, but they also seem to kind of have a genuine connection. And Edwin's backstory was really sad and tragic. I appreciated that and definitely steamy. And I totally predicted the twist, which I'm very proud about. Next, I read ebook Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. This is about Lillian Shane. Lily has revenge sex with her ex fiance's father. <laughs> so as the title really says it all, your dad will do. This was steamy as hell. I mean, all the steam, very little plot, just really all the sex scenes all the time. Super fire, hot stuff. Daddy kink, if that's your thing. And I rated it five stars. Because it was just, like, the sexiness I needed in my life at that moment. That was, it was just gave me the escape from life that I needed at the moment. So I have no objections, no regrets. It was great. If that's your thing. If that's not your thing, then that's okay. Do not read it if that is not for you. But I just found it was the thing that I needed in my life, and it was great. And I appreciated it, and I enjoyed it. The next thing I read was an ebook that was Dance All Night by Alexis Daria. This was about Nick and Jess. 
it was a holiday read, second chance romance. So they have a New Year's Eve, really steamy, sexy New Year's Eve kiss. They separate for a year. He comes back during the holidays and he's like, I've been thinking about you. I cannot get you out of my mind. I want to make this work. Give me three dates to prove to you. And she goes for it and she's kind of a Scrooge. So he like takes her on these really cutesy holiday dates to like inspire her on the magic of Christmas, which I think is really, really sweet. So if you want a holiday read, definitely recommend this one. The holiday vibes are so great. Interracial romance just is, I want to say she's Afro-Latina. Yes, really cute and streamy for a holiday read. Strongly recommend. The next thing I read was an ebook as well. This was a tycoon by Joanna Shoup. That is the first book in her Knickerbocker series done through American Guilt Age. And I rated it four stars. It was about Ted and Clara. One bed trope on a train. Can't get better than that. It was really enjoyable. Definitely more of a grump and sunshine trope-ish. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really cute. Steamy novella. It was really cute. I really enjoyed. I just kind of want, I actually kind of wanted more from it. I kind of wanted it to be longer because I really, really enjoyed their characters a lot. And it definitely made me super intrigued by the rest of the series. So ah, definitely something to add to my TBR for sure. The next thing I read was an ebook that was Wrapped Up in You by Talia Hibbert. This is about Will and Abigail. They're friends to lovers and also interracial. Abigail is black and Will is white. Surprisingly from Talia Hibbert, I expected all the steam, but this was not all the steam. I would say this was more of a slow burn. Very cute, friends to lovers, and all the holiday vibes. Def set at Christmas time, definitely get all the holiday vibes. They get stuck at Abigail's grandmother's, and they get stuck in the snow, in the snow during a blizzard. So can't get any cuter than that. Solid four stars. Really enjoyed. The next one I read was ebook. This was The Hookup Before Christmas by Phyllis Bourne. Very, very short novella. It is only 26 pages. This was about Toy and Lennox. Uh, they have a one night stand. It is a black romance because the both both of them are black. It, despite it being really really short, I really felt invest immediately invested in, this, in these characters, which I definitely contribute to the writing. I was invested in the characters right from the get go, and I really enjoyed their banter, and it was a lot of fun. I definitely want to read more from her because I really enjoyed the twenty six pages. Like I would love to have seen like what she would write if she wrote more. The only thing that I was a little bit disappointed about was it was very steamy, but then it was very fade to black. Once things were like really getting interesting, then like we had got nothing. So I could have just a little gotten a like a little bit longer for me to get some more steam. So that was the only thing that I was kind of one of the things that I was kind of a low key disappointed about. But also great holiday vibes, great Christmas holiday read, a little bit insta love. But I was I, I kind of expect insta love from most novellas, so I was okay with it. Rated it four stars. And then next we have an ebook that was Mangoes and Mistletoe by Adriana Herrera. This was about Kiskia and Sully. I pronounced that totally wrong. This is a sapphic holiday romance. It is Dominican women being teamed up together in a cooking competition in Scotland during Christmas. It was so cute and steamy, very insta love, but it was really, really great. I really, really enjoyed it. Four stars. Yes, I think this was one of my the, my, my favorite a sapphic romance that I read. And also just Adriana Herrera. I really, really enjoyed her writing. So I really, I've been, there's been a couple series that I've been interested in her before and has made me want to go and check them out and like kind of bring them up on my TBR. And then this one. <laughs> so we have audiobook that I listened to. I read Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. This is the first book in the Ice Planet Barbarians series. This is a book series that gets all the talk on Romancegram and Romance Booktube. I feel like I'm like the last one to have read it and have jumped on the train. I was very resistant because I did not like alien romances. They're not, I'm not a huge fan of alien romances. I've read a few in my time. I tend to not enjoy. So I was resistant to this, but it came through an audio. I had a Romancegram made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up listening to it and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> this was about Georgie and Vectal. Georgie ends up getting abducted by aliens as well as of her uh, several other adult women. And then they get basically dropped onto a planet where they get abandoned. And so they decide to go out and find their way and figure out where they are. 
and Georgie runs into Vectal. I don't even know if I want to say it. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say too much. Anyway, <laughs> it's really cheesy and silly, but it's kind of delightful and steamy. Like the writing's really silly, but also kind of captivating. Like I was interested in Georgie right from the get-go. She was an interesting character. Vectal was surprisingly sweet for an alien. Like they mate, like, immediately when they see their mate, they know who it is, and they, Im like, immediately have respond. I won't explain why and what causes that. So him just, like, completely dote on her was just very sweet. And now, of course, I'm, like, invested. Like, I need to know what happens to some of these other aliens with some of these other adult women. <laughs> it's just, it's so ridiculous. But it was such a fun time. It's, like, a really short audiobook. I... It was six hours, and if you did something, you want something really silly, but also kind of sweet and romantic and steamy, it was a lot of fun. I can definitely recommend it. I surprisingly enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. If you don't think you're in an alien romance, then at least try this. I have to say, ah, Romance Together made me do it, and I have no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> I'm glad I read it. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so there you have it. Next read I have was an ebook. I read A Merry Little Filth Miss by Nicole Falls. This was about Bryce and Yemi, another black romance. I was a little bit underwhelmed by this one. I mean, A Merry Little Filth Miss, great title, right? And then it ended up being very little about Christmas. Like, it just, ha romance happens to happen around Christmas. But, like, nothing, like, really holiday happened, which is kind of disappointing. And it was steamy, but... It also ended very abruptly, and I didn't know if Bryce and Yummy really made it. I mean, super abruptly, it ends out of nowhere. A little bit underwhelming, but three stars. It was still cute. Just if you give me a novella, then like give me a complete novella. Give me a full arc of this relationship is going somewhere, even if it's a happy for now. I'm totally okay with that. But that was, I didn't even get that. That's what I've read so far. It is New Year's Eve today. I'm going to try to finish some things before midnight. No guarantees, though, but that is the plan. That is my hope. And um, and hopefully come back and come say a couple more reviews for things. So, yeah, it's been a great month so far. I have to say, I really enjoyed my smutty, smutty good times. No lies. Okay, until later. Hi, hello. So editing Bethany's coming in. I decided not to film like with my bookcase and everything just to wrap up my wrap up because I don't know. I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> didn't end up finishing anything else for December. Most everything else I finished that I was reading in December, I ended up just finishing in January, adding them to my December wrap up. I've just decided to go ahead and end this wrap up where it is. It's long enough as it is. And so just include my final count for all the things. So I ended up reading 21 books for December, quite the month. A lot of them were novellas, but I'm really, really okay with that. I think that's a great way to end the year with novellas like that because it just ended up being a really fun month and it really hit my count that I needed for my Goodreads goal. So I'm really okay with that. It was a lot of fun. At the end of the month, I had only read one five star, which, you know, is okay because I think novellas are really hard to be five stars, mostly because I, even if I really, really, really enjoy them, I'm always going to want a little bit more. There was not a lot of five stars this past month, unfortunately, but there was 12 four stars. So that's still a really good month because four stars are still really good books. I'm okay with that. Then we have six three stars and two two stars. So overall, a pretty decent month. And then I ended up reading two physical books, 11 ebooks because of all those novellas, and eight audiobooks. And the audiobooks were mainly Bridgerton's and their second epilogues. So super fun. What a great month. And January has been shaping to be a good reading month too because I finished a lot of things already. So it's exciting. Starting off 2021 in my reading, right. And that is it for this wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw and want to see more from me, please subscribe and hit likes and bells. I would really appreciate it. 
and comment what your favorite holiday read was for December. Or if you're not a holiday person, just in general, what your favorite December read was. I would love to know. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you again soon. Bye!